yourself or saying, oh, I'm still, I'm still uh, attracting that and that's not what I want and what kind of vibration am I putting out there on this and that. Just keep it super positive and super light and flick off whatever, you know, is that uh, that you don't want in your experience and keep looking at the positive aspects. And I'm telling you, the best of the yeah. best yeah. Uh, you know, is going to come and it's going to even surprise and delight you in a way that you didn't expect. And it's going to be even better than when you imagine. Yes, yes. And and it is, it's like that, okay, now what? And then, and also by doing that, by those positive aspects, you're saying, yes, more of this, please. You're saying, thank you, more of this. And so you'll notice more and more people coming to you with those kind of aspects. Yeah, that's so good. Awesome. Okay, and uh, Katrina had her hand up. Is Katrina still here? Yeah, I'm here. There she, there she is. I was like looking at the little squares. I'm like, where'd she go? The square oh, yeah. around. <laughs> um, so um, back to what you were saying, because I was in a place like that, but it felt like I was settling. And I was like, okay, so I'm meeting, you know, these guys and, um, you know, like, especially my last situation and I'm still like, you know, recovering from. I was like, okay, maybe I'm settling. And then I'm um, honestly, it kind of put a little fear into getting back out of there and trying to date again. So I'm just trying to get my mind in that positive aspect and also not feeling like I'm settling, you know, knowing what I want, not settling for it, but obviously, you know, not being picky, but I don't feel like I was being picky. I feel like I was more or less settling. So I'm just trying to create that balance um being positive and having the courage to get back out there and really trying to manifest what I want but maybe I'm not sure where my mindset is right now and what would be the main point for me to start with as I'm going into this journey yeah and and I think a really good general place to to be too is how you want it to feel like how right. you want the relationship to feel. There's some really good relationship rampages that Abraham has of the feel. There's one called grid work, relationship grid work. It's so good to just talking about the ease of a relationship and how it feels so comfortable. And it's like, like a home feeling. And it's just, it's so easy. I really like that one. And so for you personally focusing on how you want the relationship to feel and having like those positive aspects. And also I, I love the saying of this or better, this or better, you know, because it's like you have those positive aspects and there's always more, there's even more than you even imagine. Right. Okay. I will look that up. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And the little record thing probably went off because I was like, oh, this conversation is so good. And then I thought, I better make sure I'm recording. And then I was like, oh, dope. <laughs> so we'll have about half of it recorded. <laughs> it's all really good. Awesome, awesome. Um, okay. Oh, another, oh, I see Alan's finger going up. <laughs> Did you have something, Alan? I just want to ask, on, on this particular trip, did you have one or maybe your top, I guess, serendipitous or or weird thing that happened that you didn't expect that you'd like to share that kind of rang home that, hey, this is another another proof or another stepping stone that I can use to ferment my uh, or to concrete my ideal, you know, my your mindset. Anything happened like that on this particular one? Well, I feel like, um, so being in Lumine and always like sitting because, and, and we did prepave that too, because I know, well, the cruise before I'd been on in Hawaii, I think we had two of the nights where we were right next to Esther's table. So I'd had that experience before. So I was kind of prepaving with Goodrin. Oh, well, we're going to have dinner with Esther. <laughs> And so three, well, two of the nights I was with um, Goodren 
And I'm like, okay, we're not at the same table, but we're right next to her. So it, you know, it's, it's just like having dinner with Esther. Um, so that, that was a really, you know, serendipitous synchronicity. And well, and Gudrun and I both agreed, you know, and, and she said, especially for her to just being in that, being in that vibration of luxury and, and I've been looking back to, so I've three cruises now I've been in a suite and, and then the last time Gudrun and I roomed together, we got an upgrade to aqua class, which is the same room, but then you get, you also get blue restaurant and a couple of other things. You get the Persian garden. So I'm like, look at this luxury Gudrun. And so, you know, we were really just vibing that up. And so it felt like, it felt like that luxury vibration and that, that kind of worthiness and the expectation being leveled up. So that I would say that was, that was a big takeaway for me too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And the weather thing too, of like well, having that intention and then like, yes, it worked. <laughs> two, two quick points on the weather thing. You think I want it to be clear. You have your expectation, your visualization of what you want it to be. But what if it doesn't happen that way? You know, sometimes in the most incongruous manner, the most weirdest thing, the most adverse, that's when you're at your happiest. That's when I am I'm so freaking glad that happened. It turned out perfectly, even though it's not what you expected, but still the circumstances turned out perfectly. So be open. It's not what you expect, but it's what you need sometimes. Or what, yes. what you, and and the second and the second thing is when um um well about about the uh, about our Karen and I we have just a regular room, but I want a balcony. We got to see I mean, we can see the ocean, but I want a balcony. And we 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 uh did the upgrade thing. We haven't heard anything back yet. We just checked tonight. But you know what? I'm imagining in my brain. I'm I'm gonna that I'm because the balcony was just so exquisite. I spent so much time out there when Pepper and I went. In, in uh in March. It was just an exquisite experience, the balcony. So I'm imagining it. I'm yeah. visualizing it. I'm tasting it. I'm feeling it. I'm experiencing it even now. We'll see what happens. Yes. And it's even better in Alaska because I, I don't know what route you guys are taking, but ours was like the inside passage. So there's a lot to see from the ship. And every morning you would wake up with this new <clears throat> view of the mountains and then going into the glacier too you start to see these chunks of ice floating in the water and as you get closer it's just bigger chunks it was so cool yeah awesome okay there was someone else I think that had their hand up oh it was Stephen Stephen did you have something Wrong button. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, you're cutting out a little bit. I love the, I love the sweet thing. Yes. I'm much like you. <laughs> it is in here. Oh. There we go. There we are. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry That's about all that. Here. Technology and me have a little dance going all of the time i'm getting a lot better though <laughs> this one's not quite the tango but um yeah there, there's it's so wonderful those cruises and when you're talking about it it's like i wouldn't care what boat she got on <laughs> or abraham got on what line or where they were going I think I even said that once, you know, I, you know, I said, Ron, wherever they're going, wherever they're going to be, here's a credit card. I'm on. And, uh, and then I got it. And uh, it, it's been it's been incredible. And the joys that you get from all of that. And I can just imagine you and Gudrun. <laughs> we had a great time. <laughs> Two of you just having the time of your life. <laughs> Oh, both with your little magic wands. Oh, the weather's gonna be good, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun, and and that that's that's the thing. It's not what you say; it's how you say it. And sometimes it's some things are just not worth requesting, 
unless you're in alignment to ask for it. And, and that's always the tricky part. And, uh, you know, and, and it's, and it's, I, when I go on them, I just like going up in the upper left-hand corner for a while and I almost fall asleep and somewhat, I get into theta. I try to re relax and get into theta and that's where all manifestation comes from and, and plug into that and everything. I've been with uh, Abraham when I walked into the Bucharest Gardens and it was pouring. And as soon as the entourage got there, the sun came out and there's rainbows and she's flipping quarters to everybody to get on a carousel. And <laughs> it's just like that. Um, I found the best times I had is when I wasn't expecting anything. Just wanted to get plugged in again. And I found like I go, I go in and about a month before the crew, I get worked up. The crew is I'm worked up and a month after I'm worked up. So it was great. They're booking them every three months. <laughs> anyway. I thank you for sharing all of that wonderful energy with me. And uh, and a lot of wonderful things are happening here, too. And who's ever going on that next cruise, uh, if you go dog sledding, bring a plastic shield when they first start. <laughs> You'll need it. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> not, that I, not that I went dog sledding, but that's what was suggested to me. And, uh, and I just got my tickets for Edinburgh. And going um, to the Scandinavian cruise, and I'm really looking at getting a, a nice RV and a Volkswagen RV and touring Europe next year. That's my thing. Just going out there and having a blast. Yeah, uh, seeing Abraham on our second European cruise tour. <laughs> nice. Very. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, oh, one of the, one of the other, um, I don't know what conversation this was part of, but they start, they talked about your body is your body is a chemical factory and the chemicals are based on your emotion. And I really loved that conversation. Um, because they talked about, you know, your, your body is emitting these chemicals and hormones and endorphins based on your thoughts and your feelings. And so then, then your body secretes these things and it's flooding your body and you can create this too. And, you know, Dr. Joe talks about this too, of, you know, that you're, you can create those emotions and that you're, you're basically up leveling your body by tuning into those emotions and you're it's kind of like you're breaking that old habit of old emotions and focusing on new emotions that you do want to feel and i love that conversation too um you know so in i've been doing this mastermind group and i have another another one starting july 25th so one of the things that we do is a call every morning that i call a tuning call and we tune into feeling yourself as source, knowing yourself as source, and then tuning into three different emotions that are on the upper half of that vibrational scale. And when you do that, you are, you're, you're sending this signal to your body and your brain is secreting these chemicals and hormones. And so it's like you're doing this and flooding your body with all of this good energy and that it activates that in your vibration and frequency so it's like you're setting yourself up setting yourself your day up with that vibration and frequency of, of how you want to move forward to your day in your day and it's it's been so so powerful and so impactful um i just i love 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 that process um and so again that the mastermind will start July 25th. So we do daily calls and then we do weekly group sessions. And then you'll also get two private sessions with me. And that's going to be a 12 week program this time. So we're going to do it over three months. And it's going to be. And so every, and I, every mastermind, there's been such a huge energy and momentum. 
And then the next one is even better. And then that carries over into the next one and the next one. And it's just, it's been like explosive, amazing. Yeah. Um, yes, I will send out information about, um, about the mastermind. Awesome. Yes. Okay. I was just seeing if there's anything else in the chat. Yes. Alan. I uh, see your finger. <laughs> yes. I tell you on that note, there's a book by Candace Pert called molecules of emotion. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm a pharmacist and you know what our feelings there's a biochemistry going on all beside inside of us, and our gut health is so important. Our gut health, our gut produces 90% of our neurotransmitters, believe it or not. We think it's in our brain. No, it's in our gut. And so having gut health, but these molecules of emotion by that, by Candace Perk, talks about how our how we think, how we feel every day affects our health. And, and, and so this is all directly linked together. So Pertinently, it's just incredible. Um, and one of the thing I want to ask about you is um, the uh, um, wait a minute, I just drew a blank. Well, I'm going to add something to that while you think about sure. your next thing. Um, yes, and I love that. And there's also um, Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief, is very much along those same lines, and that. You know, we we're taught by Western medicine that, oh, it's your genes. If there's something in your Genetic. family like cancer that, you know, you're bound to get it. And it now there's so many studies proving that it's not just your genes. It's your environment, which your thoughts, your emotions are a huge part of that. Huge. So you really can't you are you're impacting your health, your body all the time indeed yes that absolutely i totally agree with that and as a pharmacist too for the past 40 years i talk to these people and they come in with this negativity i've got this or that I, my doctor tells me i've got a b c d and e and f disease states so they so they're constantly identifying themselves with that with that disease state and i need a b c d e f g h i j k l medicines because i needed to survive to be get to get better and so they're identifying themselves with the with the with the diagnosis with the medicines that they're on i just want to slap them silly sometimes seriously i do would you just get off your freak yeah just shh, i want to i just want to i just want to do this shh. yeah you know because they revel in that sometimes they revel in their own malignancies and their own malfortunes financial physical emotional whatever it is they want to revel in that and what do you do when you revel in that you bring more of it into your life mm -hmm. so the answer that happens you have to think no 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 it's not me and you begin to think look at every little thing in your life that you can be happy about that you can be proud that you can be thankful for and that's what you can and that only um the other thing i wanted to mention was I saw, you know, if, if I'm a skeptic, I'm a scientist, I'm a skeptic. This whole Abraham Hicks, law of attraction. The first time I found out that Abraham Hicks was really a non-physical entity and don't even. It's a really, it's a woman channeling. <laughs> don't, don't even let me, don't even, I'm not even going to try to uh, define what that means. But the first time I found that out, I said, oh God, what is this? This is a bunch of hokey, hokey stuff. And so I read the book anyway. And when I when I was on the cruise in March and I listened to Esther, she did I, I was looking for I was looking for incongruencies. I was I was intently looking for incongruencies. I didn't find any. She spoke the same way to every single person in the hot seat. She spoke, she said the same, she had the same answer. So it was concretely within her. Now, was it within her? Is she just talented? She could just do this and that. Well, when I first listened to her, and also the, the videos on the Abraham Hicks website, you can go to, you can listen to Jerry and Esther before Esther starts channeling Abraham. So the thing is, I looked at that and I said, well, there is a difference in temperament. There's a difference in tonality. There's a difference in, there's a big difference in Esther. So I'm asking you at the at the table, when you when you sat beside her, close to her at dinner time, did you, was it Esther or did you get a feeling it might have been Abraham? 
It, it felt like Esther, but I feel like, I feel like as, you know, she's been doing this for a long time. So it's also integrated in her, you know, the channel is integrated in her and, you know, it, it is part of her too. And if you, if you go back and listen to recordings from the very beginning, you know, people talk about they were on cassette tapes and I, I knew someone a long time ago that, well, he lived in San Antonio and someone handed him these cassette tapes and he just handed them back and he was like, this sounds like the devil <laughs> because it did. She had this really deep, scratchy voice. And so sometimes that happens when people first start channeling, it comes through in a different voice. So it's, and it's also so that they think that they kind of know, well, oh, it's, it's not just your voice. This is infinite intelligence coming through. And over time, if you listen to the recordings, it's become more and more integrated with her that it you can still tell the difference. Like she gets up on stage and you can tell the difference in her demeanor to when she's channeling Abraham, but I feel it, but it's getting closer and closer because, right. you know, again, she's been doing it so, so long. long. And, and also if you listen to the really early recordings, there's not as much of Esther's personality coming through now I feel like there's more of Esther's personality because she's a jokester. You know, she she likes to tell jokes. She likes to have fun. And so that comes through in the channeling. Um, yeah, and I feel like as more of her comes through, Abraham gets more playful because, you, you know, every channel, it's, it, they are channeling infinite intelligence they are connecting and it's still coming through that you're still getting you're still getting it through that person's filter and some of their personality Thank and you. i was just going to add um, i mean it's my first time so you know <laughs> meeting her or being in that kind of presence um, other than listening to her through, or him through the years but i found her energy to be more feminine and Abraham's more masculine. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was the point of distinction for me. Not that, you know, there's not some of the me and Yang and Esther, but when I met her and was in her presence and we spoke for a, a few minutes, she, there was just this bright, feminine, light, playful energy. And with Abraham, there's still that playful energy coming through as you just shared, but it's definitely more masculine, you know? So that was the distinction I saw, you know, being a first timer too. Yeah. And, you know, and every channel has a little different flavor. One that's coming to mind also is Paul Selig. <clears throat> and he has a lot of books out there. But if you listen to Paul Selig, his, his style is very different. And I would say for him, he's not very integrated and he will, he will tell you, he's had interviews where he's like, I, I don't, I just let this stuff come through. I'm not really living it. I feel like, and now he's living it more, but he, he does this weird thing also where he receives it. He says it. And then he says it again. It's a, it, it's, it's kind of bizarre. It's kind of, you have to get used to it when you first listen to him. Um, and the voice is very different. So he's a, an example of a channel that's not very integrated. Um, but like Esther, I feel like is more integrated. Daryl Ankenet, well, which is interesting also. So um, if you're looking, well, there's, there's always, there's one day workshops across the country um, and you can check their website, but also Bashar is another channeler. I know, uh, Pepper is a big follower of Bashar. I follow some of his stuff. Um, I'm at, I'm going to the Bashar workshop in Sedona. It's a two day, September 14th and 15th. I know Pepper is going to be there. Um, and there's also a big Abraham group that's going to be there. And then Abraham is in Phoenix the following weekend of the 20th. 
first, something like that. Yeah, I'm at a trade show in Florida. I, I saw that. I'm like, but, but I'm going to look up the Bashar workshop. Thank you. Yeah, That would be yeah. fun. I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be here that weekend and have no other plans. Oh, awesome. So, yay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Shivangi, I saw you had your hand up earlier. Yeah. Um, interesting uh, things I wanted to share from the workshop. Oh, and I can't, can't hear um, you real well. Is it audible? Okay. Just sorry. Uh, let me fix this. Maybe you can okay. proceed with the next share. Uh, better now? A little bit better. Okay. Maybe uh, put the microphone closer to your mouth. Okay. Oh, better yes, now? That's, that's, yes, that's much better. All right. So, yeah, just wanted to share some uh, uh, cool things from the workshop this uh, weekend. So, yeah, uh, I mean, Jerry, uh, Esther mentioned that Jerry used to say that Abraham uses uh, Esther's vocabulary better than Esther. Um, I think, like, yeah, that that is kind of a key distinction that uh, when you say, uh, like, the answers from the infinite intelligence are definitely all the way more direct. And another trend is you notice in their abilities, no matter what kind of complex question somebody throws at them, um, they're able to see right through it and just get to it. And that is something that I've noticed in our channeled conversations as well. Like, when you're connected with your inner being, it already oh, knows all the questions. It already oh, knows all funny. the questions and mm -hmm. the answers keep flowing in. So yes, there's definitely a distinction between um, uh, infinite when you're connected and when you're just operating from your logical, physical mind. So yeah. And uh, yeah, like a lot of cool things or cool takeaways from the workshop. Uh, the recurring team was flicking that off but um, uh, Abraham also mentioned uh, this thing about uh, being right in your opinions that uh, we get that you're like you have worked so hard to earn your opinions over time that you don't want to leave them and that struck a chord yes like you're fighting over the rightness of your opinions and the whole time they were like okay so if it's here, like here or here. So this is your inner being and this is what's keeping you here. So even if you're fighting for the rightness of your opinions, they're keeping you here. And I loved how, uh, I mean, everything I had been thinking about since the past whole year, uh, God answered in this single workshop, was talked about in one way or the another uh, uh, or other. Um, so I've had this uh, long time, uh, like sort of guilt or, you know, we missing family uh, staying in another country and how they view me, their perception. And um, sometimes I feel so there was that profound shift from finiteness to infiniteness, like accessing all the resources of the universe and having a relationship with someone, no matter anyone with like being sure in your source and they being sure in their source. So there was this man who had a very similar question that his cousins are not coming back to help him with his parents and they're getting old and he has responsibilities and he just got laid off and, you know, so many things. But uh, how they said, like, uh, so, you know, you're being right there and while your inner being is already looking at the solution and it's, it's not, you're trying to get pieces of finite pi, but the pi is really infinite. And you don't have to uh, just uh, like, and, and the thing that keeps you stuck also from at attracting more abundance is that you think that you're gonna take away somebody else's share, but you never deprive somebody when you take ask for yourself because it's, you're not taking their share, it's just you're attracting your own share, no matter whatever it is. And then there was other conversation about marbles, which I loved so much. The bag of marbles, like your marbles, their marbles. Like by the end of the workshop, I was so clear. I am never going to interfere with anybody's marbles because that keeps me, marbles as instead of beliefs, because obviously they would have, like there was a woman who was asking about relationship and like, a, oh, so there's a third party. And I, I mean, um, I, since I'm attracted to this person, like 
it must be meant for me because I can experience the pain. I have the desire, but so is he meant for me? But I don't know what you know I'm doing wrong. So they cleared it in a really good way. First of all, you know what? When something is meant for you, when it feels fantastic and fabulous, every single time you think about it, not just once or twice. And since you're here, we haven't heard anything that sounds like fantastic here. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, the like universe or law of attraction never designates a specific person to answer that particular request. And uh, number three, like um, she's like. Yeah, Abraham asked that, uh, what do you think is the reason this is not working out? So she began like, oh, the, his conditioning, his upbringing and his growing up. And so they were like, yeah, of course, like everyone's going to have their conditioning and their upbringing, but that's their bag of marbles. And when you go to sort out their bag of marbles, you lose touch with your inner being, which is already way past it and calling you to the future Thing. so I was like so clear that and, and every single time like this is like being the teachers you are you want to influence sort out out of your kindness empathy whatever like just sort out everybody's bag of marbles but you will lose touch with your inner being if you do that so that was very clear I came from the workshops like I'm not touching anybody's bag of marbles no matter what because life has been so simple like I had a conversation with my mom she sent me something usually I would react like mom like trying to change her beliefs but that's literally asking people to be a different way and I thought I was doing something good but no it's actually I am leaving my inner being and that's the only thing I can control so definitely like it was a notch up in worthiness and everything else. Yeah, that's really, really good. Um, yes. And so Shivangi lives in Seattle. So there was a workshop in Seattle this last. Year. Yeah. And the one last thing that I want to add with the mastermind group, it has been such a huge contributor. I mean, every Thursday uh, when we have a group session after that, I've noticed like, my vibration just rises like something that I was not clear about before within a day or two I get such amazing answers or I write them down but I, I've noticed it shifting every week just being such a profound shift and uh, like all of this in combination just works so great yes so it, thank it you does, yeah yeah and so Shivangi's been a part, part of this last mastermind and I've seen such a, a shift in you these last eight weeks too of this mastermind. You know, we we worked together off and on over the last year, but this I feel like this mastermind has really, really helped. Um, because and it also is that daily touch point of those tunings is so powerful. And I love um also and Abraham talked about this on the Alaska cruise about you know, stop, you know, the more that we can just accept other people for where they are. And again, like not trying to change their bag of marbles that their bag of marbles is their bag of marbles. They <clears throat> have their own inner being. And when you, when you stop judging something as right or wrong, you're releasing that resistance and you're just you know, and the more you tune into, oh, where am I holding, where am I creating resistance? And, oh, like you can just have that awareness and it shifts it, you know? I, so this, the thing that's been coming to me a lot lately, lately is this, it's this perspective. It's your point of view. It's like, oh, here's my point of view. Oh, if I shift it just a little bit, oh yeah, that feels different. And that resistance just falls away and it can be really quick and easy like that and it's just you know it's that vibrational tuning of the more and more you're sensitive to it you're aware of your vibration you you feel it when it comes up and that's a good thing because then you can you can easily shift or pivot Really good. Yeah. And then one more thing. Um, um, I've always had this fear of missing flights. 
uh, or like something last moment because I'm sometimes like uh, not very good with. I shouldn't say that anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm good with everything, but uh, they were like, okay, so somebody had this uh, fear of like missing the boat, and so they were like, there's always gonna be another boat. There's always like tuning into the infinite thought and then I was like actually you know what whenever I missed a flight I was rescheduled or put on another one like they weren't going anywhere I wasn't going anywhere. like usually you're in your mind and like I'm gonna miss out on that and I'm gonna miss out on that and then in the beginning of the conversation they talked something interesting about stress and anxiety uh, which had been a recurring issue for me in the past and they're like when you hold your energy like this like your inner being is here but uh, it, it could be anything. Uh, maybe somebody wants something from you, like a boss or somebody, but uh, they are stubborn. They are not willing to also go with you. And so you start uh, sorting out their bag of marbles or you're frustrated, but you're being so holding your opinion and you're being so right about it. But you're, whereas your inner being is already here focusing on the solution, you're focusing on uh, the frustration or the pr easiness of the thing and that prevents you from going there so literally it was all about here's your inner being and you can go here or here everything they just divided into here or here so by the end it was just so clear that here is everything yes yeah so just go there yes. don't even think like analyzing keeps you here dissecting it keeps you here uh forming opinions judgments da -da, da -da, blah mm -hmm. blah whatever everything just keeps you here so here's the infinite and when you have that why would you want that so like if it's that feeling of realizing that no matter how intelligent you think you are and a lot of us re rely on our brains for our day-to-day -day jobs and especially those of us who are good at analyzing and stuff but it's like feeling that actually this is nothing in comparison to the infinite intelligence because the beauty which with which she was staying on that thing and answering uh, handling those answers is like connecting to that infinite power and I also had this question about feminine energy and masculine energy um, you know because in the dating world you keep hearing a lot but uh that I've always been someone uh, who, is connect who felt connected to source energy from like, uh, I, I can look after myself. So, and I've heard Abraham say previously that uh, from our standpoint, we don't see anything like feminine or masculine. We just see like it is equal. So this workshop of uh, somebody posted, a, uh, asked a question like that, but uh, it just reconfirmed more of that so I'm able to stand in my worthiness because I was sort of previously doubting myself oh so which one do I need to be but it's all about being sure like being connected to your source no matter what body you're in um, if you're connected you're just safe you're secure and I was like we are here for fun and nothing else is more important who cares whether you're married or and things are gonna come like uh you know, and like this workshop, so many questions got answered, like on job front, on flight, missing flights, meant to be. And like, I can't uh, define the detail uh, in which those things, uh, we, we even were discussing about the quantum jumping in the last question somebody asked, they mentioned about that, that, you know, this will be a quantum jump and this would be like, they were so silly about it. But yeah, I'll, maybe I'll get the recording. I don't remember the detail part of it, but it was so beautiful how the infinite, when it creates, like we are just like, our creations are just meaningless when we let the law of attraction create it, just magic and it's like actual creation happening, like give up. Yes, so, it, it is, it's, yeah, it's that surrendering to, yes. you know, the infinite tele intelligence knows more than our intellectual mind can ever know or comprehend and so when we allow that it's like you know there's so much more available to us and it re reminds me of another abraham hot seat um my friend leanne was in the hot seat i, I don't remember i think it was from the hawaii cruise and she was talking about being late she hates being late 
And she was talking about, you know, the frustration, traffic, and when timing doesn't work out. And Abraham, it was such a good conversation because Abraham was, but you know, just basically saying, well, it's always all working out. And maybe if that traffic diverted you to a different, a different path or a different timing. So you missed, you know, a traffic accident that was going to be here or, you know, a certain timing of running into a person that it's all, all always working out for you. It's kind of like Alan mentioned that before, like things we might see as contrasty are actually to our benefit also. And so when we can you know, re surrender, relax, like let go of realizing everything is working out. Things are flowing and the ease of time that it's, you know, you're never late. You're, you're always at the right time at the right place. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And so at the end of the workshop, I was like, no, I think it was in the beginning. I was like, I think the soundest decision that I can take from here is to trust uh, the uh, inner beings uh, uh, intelligence and not think yeah. about it, just give it up, just, you know, do it. And, and the other part of what she stressed upon, um, Abraham stressed upon was that, um, so, so inner being is always moving forward, like, there's no fun here, like, it's gum which is uh, chewed the flavor out of or like you know like it's you want to be here and by the end I was, yeah actually I would enjoy that more so whatever happens just put it back in the past like yeah what what must be my inner being thinking that they are they can find joy in this moment so let me find that thought and be there with them because that's where we are going why do I want to keep at the back seat yeah yeah and hang and yeah. so like there's no need to worry yeah so good so it's been really good yeah awesome okay um chanel did i say that right show me show me hi <laughs> show me you can call me show me or karen i'm trying to decide which name to go by these days <laughs> i just wanted to say hi this is my first time in this group and my husband and I decided that Abraham should have a warning label. Um, <laughs> now we've been doing a, we, we've been for 25 years, we've been doing Abraham on and off, Bashar on and off, Course in Miracles on and off, um, you know, all, all kinds of Joe Dispenza and all kinds of things. Um, but um, we were supposed to be on the cruise, but Abraham blew up our marriage. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay <laughs> like a therapist and I agree with Alan I agree oh my god Alan you know with um the, you know the same thing with psychotherapy all the freaking shit we look at in ourselves and all the psychoanalyzing ourselves his codependency my clinging blah 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 um you know just just we got to be done with that but but anyway our our um but but it was great like everything is always working out for us even though on one hand you know my human is terrified and I'm in Michigan right now in this beautiful Michigan instead of Colorado where I live um but um and um but what I the reason I came to this group is because um you know everybody in my life um, just wants to see me as the victim. You know, I, I'm, I'm the one who said to my husband when I realized it, because we've, we feel like we've had a soul contract for thousands and thousands of years where he said he was going to be responsible for me <laughs> and take care of me. And I, one day at, at having done so much Abraham, I had this huge spiritual experience come over me and I bowed to him and I said, my love, I release you from our soul contract. Oh, wow. um, and, and it was amazing. We, I recorded it. It was so beautiful. We talked, we cried and we talked for a couple of hours about the release of the soul con contract. And, um, and then we decided more, he decided that we need to actually divorce. Um, and, and so, you know, so I'm facing the human issues of it, but 
everything is always working out for me. And I need people in my life who are going to support me in that instead of, oh my God, Karen, and there's another woman and oh my God. And, you know, so, so I'm just, I'm just so loving this conversation and, um, and the energy and the high vibration. And, and every day I get up, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh my God, the, the door to my future of, um, you know, getting old and dying with, with Mark is over, you know, oh, that, that blanket, you know, of suffocation is over. And then by the, by the first thing in the morning, I am up and walking and doing, you know, just um, talking Abraham in my head, and and I, and all of a sudden, I am on my high flying disc. Like I get to, I get to be fully me. I get to express my work in the world, you know, in ways that I never did in that little. What my husband and I said that we realized we were like two two puppies in a cardboard box clinging to each other, you know, which was really sweet. And we weren't living our souls. And so, yeah, this is what I get to do now. So I just wanted to say hi to everyone and thank you for, for all being here. It just feels so great to be in your energy and your vibration. Yes. Thank you for sharing. That's so powerful. And it, you know, it does make such a big difference when, you know, you know, you know, when you, when you talk to certain people and they just, they want to go down like a negative path of like the sadness and da, da, da. And you're already in this place of like, no, I'm not there. So let, let's not go there. Let's, you know, keep going, you know, go up. And it is so, it is so important. And to know of, and like respecting yourself too, of knowing, like if you get in a conversation and this is something I've learned to practice for myself in the last couple of years of, you know, if I get in a conversation that just doesn't feel good, it's not going down, you know, it's kind of having a negative spin. I'll just say, you know, this, this doesn't feel good Mm -hmm. and either change the topic or, you know, I'll, I'll just get up and go to the restroom or something, just kind of a, to have that break, remove myself from the situation, oh, get back into your alignment. And then, okay, now it's like flicking that off. Okay, now what? And, you know, being in that alignment because you you already know it's your own internal alignment is so yeah. important. Yeah. You need oh. it in. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, tuning into your own inner alignment, you know, and where you are and honoring that. Yeah. And I'm so glad you guys mentioned the Bashar and Sedona and then Abraham and Phoenix and Bonnie. I have great friends. I used to live in Tucson, Arizona and have good friends in Sedona, but I want to go to those. I don't know if I said when I came on, did I say I was supposed to, we were supposed to be on the Abraham cruise? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so now I'm like, I need, I need to get to the next freaking Abraham thing and the next Bashar thing too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure there's, there's other Abraham things too. I know they're in San Francisco and San Diego in August. Um, Yeah. Yeah. But that's my part of the country that I need to get back to at some point. The Arizona area. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. There's so much magic there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Jackie. Well, I just wanted to say to her, can you hear me? Yes. I live in Surprise, Arizona right now, a transplant from Seattle. So if, if uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm planning to go to the Abraham in Phoenix. I won't get to the Sedona one. I'm going to be out of town, but um, yeah, maybe we can touch base or something. That'd be great. Yeah, sounds great. My cousin just moved to Surprise, Arizona, too. <laughs> oh, awesome. Is that is another uh, Abraham person? She's not. She's oh. <laughs> not, not even close. She would think it was of the devil, but you and I can connect. <laughs> yeah, we can just bypass all that. We don't need that. <laughs> 
anyway, <laughs> thanks for letting me share that. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. awesome. And yeah, we'll, um, we can set up a little chat or something um, for people that are going to that because it is, it is so nice to have those things. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I created this group. That's an open discussion. And then the, the mastermind also, I've, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I've been involved in other groups and have felt how powerful it is to be part of an uplifting group. And I love the one-on-ones and there's something very special about the group because it's like one, one person winning it, everyone wins and it's, we're lifting each other up. So it's that collective vibration that goes higher and higher and higher. And, you know, where two or more are gathered, like the energy is, is even more. So I, I love the energy of a group. Um, and again, I'll send out information about the mastermind. I'll send out um, an email follow-up to all of you with that information. And also I want to mention, um, Mariana was on the call. She had to leave. If I don't know if there's anyone on here that's in the South Florida area, but she's also doing an in-person meetup. So this Friday in Fort Lauderdale, there will be an in-person meetup. Um, I saw Dana on here before, but she must have had to leave. Um, yeah. And oh, I'm going to just look through the chat. Okay. See if I think we got everything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all so much for being here. Again, it's, it's always the collective energy and that that's something Abraham says too. It's, it's the collective energy of the people there at the workshop. And it's the summoning of the energy that it's, it's so, so powerful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And I, I'll make this uh, record the, the recording that I got, <laughs> we missed the first part, um, but the recording will be available. I'll post it on the Facebook group. All right. And reach out to me directly too, if you have any questions. All right. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye. <laughs>